When I first heard about Conservapedia, I thought it was a joke, and after having spent hours and hours and hours on the site, I still can't tell if it's real or just really good satire. Hi, I'm Dylan, and this is Not Exactly Normal. The first thing that you see when you land on Conservapedia doesn't exactly help with this question of whether or not it's satire. The logo. It looks like something that The Onion would design as a parody of a conservative website. Especially when paired with the slogan, the trustworthy encyclopedia, a phrase that immediately calls into question the site's trustworthiness. Now, I don't necessarily have a huge problem with the idea of a conservative encyclopedia. I do think that society would benefit from everyone sharing the same idea of the truth, but that's clearly not where we are. Alternative facts. No, it isn't truth. Truth isn't truth. We are fighting the fake news. It's fake, phony, fake. So if a group of people want to have a website that tells them that animals came from Noah's Ark, I don't really think it's too harmful. I could be wrong. Unfortunately, that's not really what Conservapedia is. Conservapedia is supposed to be a conservative alternative to Wikipedia. It was created by a homeschool teacher, Andrew Schlafly, and his students in 2006 in response to Wikipedia becoming too biased with liberal views. Wikipedia has become unsuitable because it's become very biased. They have an article on the theory of evolution, and when conservative or Christian editors tried to add information to that about the other side of the argument and the argument for creationism or intelligent design, it was censored and taken out of there. On Conservapedia, you're going to get the other side of that. You're going to get evidence against evolution. Same thing for homosexuality. Suddenly, the logo design question is coming into focus. As much as our society has become more and more polarized over the last 30 years, I know a lot of conservatives, and I can't say that I think any of them would find this website particularly appealing. If you land on the homepage of Conservapedia, you'll see some of their most popular entries, many of which resemble the rantings of a conspiracy theorist and all around not great person. For example, one of the entries on their most popular list is titled Deliberate Ignorance, in which the first example of such is, quote, liberal denial about the ability to leave the harmful homosexual lifestyle as thousands have successfully done. Another good one is the sixth entry on their list of most popular articles, titled Worst College Majors. Intrigued, I clicked, read, and found out that the worst college majors leave students with few job opportunities, ultra-liberal views of the world, and those colleges are far more likely to produce defaults on student loans than to produce graduates. What was the source on that one? Oh, there you go. In case you were wondering, some of the worst college majors include communications, criminal justice, urban planning, women's studies, video game design, pre-law, golf management, climatology, puppetry, and many, many more. In an attempt to find a more centered article, I pulled up their entry on video games, which I thought would be fairly innocuous because, you know, it's an encyclopedia. But instead, I got this. A video game is any electronic game, typically addictive and violent, which is played on a computer or console. As some wake up to how harmful violent video games are, the video game industry declined in 2012, though it remains much bigger than Hollywood. Video games are likely the single biggest cause of bright young men dropping out of college. While video games were originally designed for children and adolescent males, video games have become too popular with adult males, many of whom will often neglect family and work to spend a copious number of hours playing video games, including online games as World of Warcraft, in a video game addiction. Liberal denial discourages people from recognizing the problem. Video games have been accused of being linked to murders by young people and other violence, stress-induced health problems including unexpected heart attacks, atheism, obesity, and sexual immorality. Several prominent murderers in the last few years were inspired by video games. Young mass murderer Adam Lanza was immersed in a perverse video game world and killed himself to prevent law enforcement from taking his points. He plotted his rampage far in advance and learned the principles of the tactical reload from his video games. Video games have also been used as murder simulators by American Army in order to desensitize young man into triggering the gun better and with less doubt, thus killing enemies more efficiently. The article then links out to a page on mass murderers filled with so-called evidence that, quote, their motives have been overwhelmingly atheistic or liberal or driven by hatred of God, and that most were big video game players and marijuana users. It makes no mention of how easily accessible firearms may factor into the equation. 
If you remember, Conservapedia was founded in order to create an encyclopedia free from liberal bias. So let's see what the dirty libtards over at Wikipedia wrote about video games. A video game is an electronic game that involves interaction with the user interface to generate visual feedback on a video device such as a TV screen or computer monitor. The word video in video game traditionally referred to a raster display device, but as of the 2000s it implied any type of device that can produce two or three dimensional images. Some theorists categorize video games as an art form, but this designation is controversial. Ugh, that's so biased. Note that the liberal cucktards left out the truth of it all, that video games create violent people. That's the odd thing about Conservapedia. I get seeing a website that you perceive to have a strong political bias and then desiring to create a website free from said bias, but for the most part, Conservapedia is incredibly biased towards whoever's writing it. Or it's a joke. For example, on their list of most popular articles is an article titled Liberal Denial, which explains all the ways in which liberals deny things. Like how liberals continue to deny that Donald Trump defeated Hillary Clinton in the 2016 election, or that homosexuality reduces lifespan, or that there really are only two genders, or that the 2015 Women's World Cup team was all white, or that violent video games incite and train young mass murderers to go on unspeakable killing rampages, or that women might be worse at math, or that they themselves are in fact liberal. I should note that Wikipedia does not have articles for either liberal denial or conservative denial. And before I forget, there is an article on Conservapedia titled Liberal Claptrap, which defines the pretentious nonsense promoted by liberals. It will probably include this video. Next on their list of most popular articles are so-called Hollywood values, a term that I had never heard before and was delighted, or maybe disturbed is the better word, upon learning its definition. Hollywood values are characterized by public obscenities, decadence, narcissism, hypocrisy, rampant drug use, extramarital sex leading to the spread of sexually transmitted disease, abortion, lawlessness, and the promotion of the homosexual agenda. The article goes on to break down all the people in Hollywood who've been killed by Hollywood values. There is a lot of on this list. One of the worst includes blaming actor Salmoneo for his own murder because he was gay. But there's a lot more than that. So let's move on to something that no one could possibly accuse of having liberal bias. Star Wars. During the time of the prequel trilogy, Lucas's liberal politics came to the forefront, with there being more overt left-leaning agenda in the films, including a negative depiction of creating a military, a negative depiction of capitalism in Episode 1 and 2 via the main antagonistic groups of the Trade Federation and the Separatists. Damn it. They also criticized Return of the Jedi for being pro-Viet Cong propaganda, and for the film being entirely anti-Vietnam. This is an enemy which steals from us the weapons of the 20th century, and supplements them with the weapons of the 16th century, the crossbow, the spear launcher, the spike, and the man trap. On many a jungle path in South Vietnam, if you trip on a vine, you may release such a booby trap as this one, the porcupine. Correspondent who has ever ventured into the South Vietnamese countryside doubts the effectiveness of these lethal traps. They make you careful where you step. That's the idea. In fact, they believe the entire original trilogy to be anti Vietnam, as the rebels, not just the Ewoks, were supposedly modeled after the Viet Cong, while the Empire is America. Not only that, but according to Conservapedia, the Star Wars films were supposedly targeted at children in order to indoctrinate an entire generation into Lucas's leftist view of the world. Ah, your support is well seen. Despite Jar Jar's dirty libtard habit of grabbing food from the table with his tongue, Star Wars doesn't make Conservapedia's list for worst liberal movies. A list you should all read, but here are the highlights. The Alien franchise makes the list for its pro-feminist and anti-capitalist values, as well as the fact that Ridley Scott is an atheist. The Birth of a Nation makes the list too, due to the fact that according to Conservapedia, the liberals founded the KKK and then made a movie about the organization. American Psycho? Don't be fooled by this false patriotic title. It's the most anti-American film you'll ever see because it attempts to pass a stockbroker as a secret serial killer. 
Avatar makes the list for socially liberal films for promoting such, quote, destructive messages including environmentalism, feminism, and the absurd claim that nature is God. It also ridicules the military and large businesses. To make matters worse, the protagonist forms a rather creepy romance with the native princess, who is of another species, perhaps a symbol for bestiality. The overall plotline hints at endorsing environmental terrorism, which Cameron indicated that he himself supported. I should mention that about half of these movies made the list for supposedly promoting the homosexual agenda, including Hairspray, 1998's Godzilla, Independence Day Resurgence, and many, many more. And finally, Top Gun makes the list for Please Add Info. Nice. On the other hand, there are a lot of movies that the people at Conservapedia love. Here are some of the greatest conservative films. And possibly most surprisingly is Captain America The Winter Soldier, which is all about criticizing the government for spying on its own citizens and questioning the military. Oh, never mind, there it is. Quote, the filmmakers based the villains of this film on the NSA and the Obama regime. I always thought that the real Winter Soldier was Obama. Unless you want to ruin your afternoon, don't click on the article about feminism. I did, so I can share with you the dumbest parts. Feminism is an ideology that causes an alienation in affection by women for men. Feminism denies or downplays differences between men and women. Feminism opposes homemaking, child rearing, and homeschooling by women. And feminism promotes participation by women in predominantly male activities. Most prominent modern feminists support abortion. Attributes common to many feminists include an entitlement mentality and a bit of an attitude, such as a chip on one's shoulder despite benefiting from a life of privilege. On a personal level, feminism can disrupt marriages, relationships, child rearing, education, and the workplace. The feminist ideology is particularly dominant in elite universities, many large corporations, and competitive women's team sports. The article goes on to list some other traits of feminists, including shirking traditional gender activities like baking, another claim that links to a non-existent source. They advocate for women in combat in the military, just like men, and co-ed submarines. They refuse to take their husband's last name when marrying, yet the article goes on to unsurprisingly list a contradictory point saying, quote, they believe marriage implies female servitude when it is in fact a mutual bond. They criticize music, such as heavy metal, rock and roll, and country for being sexist. They want to remove the significant distinctions between how men and women dress, such as preferring that women wear pantsuits rather than dresses. That one is also linked to a non-existent source. They distort historical focus onto female figures, often overshadowing important events. Example given, Henry VIII's wives take precedence in common knowledge than his actual reign. I think that was because he kept divorcing and killing them, but what do I know? What I find particularly interesting about Conservapedia is that most of their entries read like a defense rather than a confident entry in, you know, an encyclopedia. Wikipedia is very useful, but it's also full of garbage. I find that at its best, it's a helpful starting point before you dive into real sources, but at its worst, it contains a lot of inaccurate sources, false information, and they even have a dedicated entry to the most vandalized articles on the site. Which, if you're interested, some of the most commonly vandalized articles include beavers, Justin Bieber, nipples, evaporation, the word shit, and dyslexia, which is vandalized daily by users adding obscenities, jokes, and deleting and scrambling portions of the text. I typically only see errors on some of the more obscure things that I'm looking into, while the more popular or important areas of study tend to be a lot more better sourced due to stricter editing rules. So when I read Wikipedia, the worst thing that I'll see is inaccuracies, not bias, whereas Conservapedia is almost pure bias. For example, on a hot button entry like atheism, the page details every reason why atheism is wrong or bad, rather than strictly what atheism is. Compare that to the Christianity entry on Wikipedia, which is just a bunch of information about Christianity. So much of it is weirdly aggressive. 
In one entry titled Conservapedia Proven Right, they open with, quote, Conservapedia has often been proven right on a wide range of topics, including science, politics, sports, and video games. In many cases, liberals pathetically tried to ridicule predictions that subsequently rang true. Some of the predictions include, man-made global warming is not a verified science and there is no consensus, and since it was cold in 2011, they totally got it right. One of their most ridiculous claims is about what they call the homosexuality in animals myth. They claim that examples such as one male mounting another have been used as evidence in the argument that homosexuality is natural and therefore should be permitted in human beings. Gay groups argue that if homosexual behavior occurs in animals, it is natural, and therefore the rights of homosexuals should be protected, and that there is documented proof of cannibalism and rape in the animal kingdom, but that doesn't make it right for humans. In response to this article, supposedly liberals began touting a gay penguin at the California Zoo, which in 2009, according to Conservapedia, converted back hetero and began seeing a lady penguin. Gay crisis averted. Let's just hope they don't start eating each other. While Wikipedia does have very similar disclaimers on their site, I think it's important to note this all caps, bolded section of Conservapedia's disclaimer page, reading, Users rely on the information here entirely at their own risk. Yet despite this, in an entry on how Conservapedia differs from Wikipedia, the first point is, quote, Wikipedia is part of the hearsay society, drawing no distinction between what is factual and what is unreliable hearsay. We at Conservapedia separate the wheat from the chaff. I had never heard of a hearsay society before, so join me in learning. The hearsay society is a term used to describe a prevailing current of thought stemming in large part from the popularity of Wikipedia that discourages making statements unless a reference can be found to others having said them already. And if a reference is found, then the statements are considered true regardless of whether the reference consists of unreliable hearsay. This is a form of intellectual cowardice and can lead to the propagation of misleading, incorrect, or deliberately untrue information, while some individuals abandon even the attempt at using their own logic or thinking for themselves. So if I follow, a hearsay society is one that requires sources for information, and often those sources are bad, and bad sources are worse than no sources. This is essentially the purpose of Russell's teapot, a thought experiment describing that if I claim there's an invisible teapot careening through space, then the burden of proof is on me, not you, to prove the existence of the teapot. Same goes for anything. You can't just say random things and then say, this is true. If it is not true, then you have to prove it. While I do agree that Wikipedia certainly does have a sourcing problem, Conservapedia has a far worse one. First of all, for many of their bold claims, they have no sources at all. And for those that do have sources, they cherry pick information to best suit their conclusions. For example, the video game entry leads with, quote, the video game industry declined in 2012, which links to a missing NBC article. And while it is true that video game sales dropped 9% in 2012, the market is trending upwards, with its market share having almost doubled since 2012. Claims like video games are likely to be the single biggest cause of bright young men dropping out of college, or that video games are linked with atheism, neglect of family, sexual immorality, violence, and murders by young people go unsourced. While claims like video games cause an increased rate of obesity in children are linked to sources that don't back up those claims. That claim in particular is linked to a report on childhood obesity from the Department of Health and Human Services, which mentions video games a grand total of twice, and they actually specifically mention that children watching television have the highest incidence of obesity. And while I'm sure that video games and their allure to children have definitely contributed to the sedentary lifestyle to which obesity is drawn, if you're going to make a claim, at least link to a source that is actually saying what you're saying. Otherwise, you may be accused of contributing to a hearsay society. In order to promote his website, on December 8, 2009, the website's founder, Andrew Schlafly, appeared on The Colbert Report. So I've wanted to talk to you for the longest time and to tell you one thing, sir. Thank you. Thank you for taking the internet back for conservatives. <laughs> Which brings me to my original question. Is it a joke? Since its creation, the site has been marred by saboteurs who've infiltrated the site to create their own satirical entries. Schlafly, the site's creator, claims to have the fake articles under control, but it can be really hard to tell. So what we're left with is a site created in earnest that is so ridiculous in its content that it's nigh impossible to tell what was written with sincerity and what wasn't. I keep looking for an Onion logo somewhere on the site, but have yet been unsuccessful. If it is satire, it's some of the best satire that I've ever seen, and if it's not, then the weekend I spent on the site as conservative overlord won was truly depressing. But that's probably just because of my Hollywood values.
What do you guys want me to talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Not Exactly Normal as often as I can make them. If you'd like to help me make episodes a bit more often by supporting me on Patreon, it would be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching.